Welcome, guys. Welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Thank you guys for joining. I'm sure a lot of you guys will catch this on the follow-up. All right, so um, we have a showcase today. Uh, we're taking a look at Supreme Ultra 2.0. And if you guys have been either a Supreme Team follower or supporter, or if you guys have followed me on my Patreon, I think I gave you guys access to this about two months ago or so. And so um just want to give you guys a quick showcase. I don't think I'll get too much into gameplay today because primarily there's a lot to cover in regards to this. A lot of major improvements made to this versus uh, RetroPie or Supreme Ultra 1.0. So with that being said, we're going to get into it. So um, I have a basic menu loaded basic theme we got a few arcade games on here um i only added them to pull up a few different systems and test a few things out and uh one of the biggest uh accomplishments that has been added is let's go take a look at our menu options now if you guys followed my channel um a few days ago i did a live stream with the uh supreme sending 2.0 so you guys will have that I know we first showed that here on the channel about two years ago. So you have auto on, auto start, full calibration. And then, of course, for you Patreon subscribers, uh, stay tuned. I will be giving, giving you guys a walkthrough on how to make any RetroPie image or any RetroPie build sending uh, compatible. So uh, you do have that script that is on here. You guys can check that out because it takes too long to explain here in this video. All right, so we're going to go to our options. And uh, thanks again to the Supreme team, <clears throat> as well as um, one of the other guys here. I want to make sure I get everything. We got uh, a couple of the members of Retro Devils also contributed uh, to this as well. So, you know, one of the things that I've always been pleased to do is give people proper credit in the community when they make a contribution, especially to something uh, that helps, you know, people if it's something I'm showcasing here on the channel. So uh, we have audio tools, we have controller tools, we have emulation, RetroPie, visual tools, uh, front end switcheroo. Um, if you guys are familiar with the uh, tri-boot mode, you could go between the uh, Raspberry Pi front end uh, you also, or the Raspberry Pi OS. You also had a track mode and you also had emulation station. So now it's all been renamed to switcheroo. So you have a track mode, emulation station, oh, Cody, and then, of course, Pegasus as well. You have that on here, which is something really nice. Um, one of the other biggest features, um, I actually showcased this about two years ago. Uh, one of the Supreme Team members made me a custom script that will allow me to change my music with my theme. In fact, that had not been done before on RetroPie. And so I think another development team developed something very similar However, it's uh, much more improved and it's called Tamo. Uh, if I'm saying it correctly, Tamo Plus. And so what this allows you to do is change a personal theme of yours and also have the music change. Because originally, if you guys are familiar with uh, RetroPie or Emulation Station, uh, you would always have a defaulted music set. And so with this, if you have, let's say, a space theme, you can categorize it to have the space theme change, and it'll also change with your music. Let's say if you want to use Interstellar, or let's say if you have a theme like Cowboy or the Old West, you can have uh, Old West music, music playing with it. Or if you have Batman theme, you can now have the music change for that. So uh, that is now included. And so we had two teams working together primarily on this script. It's called Tamo. So you guys will be really interested in uh, how this functions as well. Uh, so there are some other major features here on Supreme Ultra 2.0. In fact, I do believe the release date is tomorrow. And so just a quick look at Tamo. We have uh, theme settings. You have music, visual settings, controller settings, emulation, RetroPie, user control. And then, of course, you also have uh, your disclaimer as well. So if you guys have any questions about this, I'll also be taking on the questions as well. Uh, but everything else is still here. Is still here. Um, however, there have been a few modifications made to this. So if you have your visual two scripts, if you guys are familiar with, I believe it was the Raspberry Pi video output script. I think I first showed that back in uh, May 2019. 
So uh, that's now been moved. It's still on here. It's just named differently from the category. So you have uh, visual tools, and then you'll have uh, the resolution tool menu. So we're going to go ahead and click on this. All right. So as you can see, the menu has been upgraded and changed. And for those of you wondering, uh, back in 2019 as well, if you're looking for something that is quote unquote arcade one up compatible, uh, we started using that terminology around May 2019. Uh, this is what arcade ready means when you're getting a Raspberry Pi image and you're looking for something that is arcade one up ready. All that terminology means is the video output script is there because originally RK1 was using 5-4 uh, ratio monitors, and so people would have to go into Raspberry Pi image, automatically type it in or adjust it to maybe 4-3. So um, if you guys do need to change it to a specific layout, you have 4-3 VGA, 4-3 480p, 5, uh, what is that, 576. 4.3, you have that there. You also have SVGA at uh, 60 hertz, that's 4.3. Uh, and then, of course, you have SVGA as well. Now, if we're going to go down here to 16 by 9, you have 570p, 480, 720, 720, 1080p, uh, 1080p, 2160, 720, and uh, you also have 2080p as well. Uh, let's go back up here for a second. I think I may have missed something. And then, of course, you have some different categories here, list connected display devices. So instead of having to go to your notepad in the config menu on change anything, you have everything uh, listed here directly from RetroPie. So um, if you guys are familiar with sending, if you guys had to adjust your settings, you have to go into your notepad file, um, adjust your accuracy, adjust your calibrations. Very similar here. You can do everything on the Raspberry Pi itself without having to go into some type of notepad or configs on your computer and then transfer the file over so everything is uh, done for you. So this is made to keep uh, everything upgraded for you and everything running seamlessly for you. All your themes and scripts are here. ES themes, Hersey's themes, RetroArch tool, RetroPie tweak, splash screen, Supreme Key tool, Now, I do have videos for a lot of these other topics, so if you guys are interested and want more in-depth about some of these other particular topics, uh, you could definitely check out my playlist. I have everything here dating back for the Raspberry Pi 4 as far as like uh, everything the Supreme Team has added, everything the community has added uh, that has been beneficial to you. But uh, this is the directory to where you could pull up either videos or if you want to pull up a specific system, whether you want to use box art or uh, different PNG files for your marquee, you definitely have everything listed here. So you can pull all your media artwork for your secondary display and have it broadcasted. Now, I know I made a video a few days ago um, in regards to the Orange Pi 5. I haven't gotten mine yet, but uh, these are still some of the advancements we're looking to uh, port over. So uh, we're going to see how easy it's going to be or how difficult it may be. Uh, to get a lot of these same features ported over and working on uh, the Orange Pi 5. Because as I know right now, there is no additional uh, support for it. Bezel Custom Scripts. Uh, we have RetroPy Tools, everything that's listed here. You guys are familiar with a lot of these things. Basic System Info, Bluetooth, Clear Last Plate, File Manager, GPIO Shutdown Utility, Overclocked Optimized, uh, reference utility menu, RetroArch, RetroArch NetPlay, USB ROMs, what is my IP, and the Wi-Fi. Um, if you guys have, I don't think this would affect too many people in the community right now because I know there's a Raspberry Pi 4 shortage, but if you guys are familiar with, uh, I think the Pi, there's the Pi 4, the latest model came out at the end of 2021. It has an additional uh, chipset on there for additional voltage settings. So if you guys get that, you can actually overclock 
or actually over add additional voltage to the Pi 4, and which will pretty much uh, put it on par with the Pi 4 8 gigabyte model. Not too many people have that, but if you guys wanted to know what is the difference between some of the Pi models or the Pi 4s, that is one of the difference. So uh, this overclock script will also assist for that in terms of voltage uh, matters. Emulation tool, you have configuration editor, open bore. And I also know this image is fully compatible with the Atari Fight Stick. Uh, with uh, the controls. Uh, it has the Zenmo uh, ju uh, Joypad uh, Dual installed already. We've already gone over the send in light gun menu. You guys can check out that previous video for that. And then, of course, you also have your reset all controller tools, uh, which definitely comes in handy. If you guys are making images, giving it to a friend, or if you need to uh, uh, erase your controls, put it into an arcade, arcade cabinet, uh, that tool will definitely come uh, beneficial for you. So uh, there is a way to do it manually. There's a lot of folders and steps you have to go through to reset it. But again, you guys already have that there. Uh, controller setup selection. I'm not going to mess with that, but you have everything there. Uh, there hasn't been anything changed here to the audio fix. I do have a couple of videos on this uh, particular topic. However, for if you aren't getting any audio, let's say I've noticed this when I use this on an arcade cabinet or move this over to a different TV, I'm just not getting any sound. It's not coming out of the uh, one eighth jack. It's not coming out of HDMI. So if you are having problems with your sound, uh, you do have your no audio fix apply first, and that will pretty much fix everything for you. So if you guys didn't know what that was there for, if you have any audio issues whatsoever, uh, that's what that uh, setting is for. Now, Supreme Ultra also boasts, I think it's a total of 200 and something systems that's on here. Let's go ahead and take a look at, I want to pull it up for you guys so you guys can see it. Let's see, we're not going to go to RetroArch. Let's go to, let's take a look. Oh, yeah, um, before I forget, fix my build. Um, if you guys have any problems with your build whatsoever, uh, this was another introduction the Supreme Team offered. Fix my bill will fix your entire image and restore it to default Supreme settings. So if you guys made any custom configs to it after the fact, this will redefault your image back to everything. Now, it won't erase your ROMs. It may erase a few controllers or whatnot. Uh, it won't erase your media. Uh, that I don't, I can't remember if it does erase your media or not for the most part. But you know, a lot of people have wondered, like, hey, why is the Supreme image or the base? so much bigger that's because there's an additional backup of this image on the image so if the stock image is about let's say 15 gigabytes that's why you'll see the base image is about 30 is because uh if you guys are familiar with windows on how you create like a restore point on your windows hard drive or your windows operating system uh this bill pretty much has the same thing so it makes everything a lot easier for you in case you guys download something and you need to revert it uh back to stock and I do believe uh, the last time with uh, Fix My Build and some of these that it was removed or actually it was on the online toolkit. So that has been taken off now. So there is no more online toolkit uh, for the most part right now. Everything is uh, based directly on uh, the Raspberry Pi or the Supreme Image. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next topic here. We have the, uh, let's see here. I want to show you guys the list of emulators uh, that has been em uh, added. Uh, let's see, Rachel Pi tools. Let's see, Raspberry Pi setup. We're going to set up for night right now. <clears throat> Oh, and one of the other emulators or improvements has been added on here is Daphne Singe. So if you guys are familiar with what Daphne Singe does, allows you to run a number of more robust uh, Daphne games, such as, uh, let's see, we have Dragon's Lair, Dragon's Lair 2. Um, I think Road Blaster may work. I can't remember if I've tested that one or not. Um, I know that Time Traveler game uh, works. Uh, if you guys are familiar with that cowboy time traveling game, that works uh, as well. Uh, give me one second. I need to check something. 
Okay. Yeah, so uh, that one works as well. So uh, that's another good benefit to uh, Supreme Ultra. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the packages that are currently installed for you. I'm going to go down to Manage Core Packages. Let's see, Joy to Key is already installed. Uh, optional. All right, so um, just want to give you guys a quick look at a lot of the emulators that are supported on here. Um, as you can see, some emulators aren't installed. You can install them if you want to, but as far as I know, the last time that I checked, some of these emulators are still broken for the Raspberry Pi 4. So uh, Advanced MAME, Advanced MAME 1.4, which both supported light guns. Uh, both of those are uh, broken. Um, well, last time I checked, they were broken. I mean, I don't know if there's been any updates, but we do have Advanced MAME. We have uh, AGS, Amiberry, Atari, you have Daphne. Now, Daphne Singe is a branch of Daphne Singe is a branch of Daphne. So uh, I guess that's why it's not appearing uh, separately because it's built on top of Daphne. So as long as Daphne is actually there, then it's, it is there. Um, now, I don't know if you guys try to update it or do anything, modify it anyway. Will it erase Daphne Singe? I haven't fully looked into that. But for the most part, if. Um, you do erase it. I would just rather do it's easier to do fix my build because that will return it to the original Supreme version and it won't update any repositories or any cores from RetroPie or any other different sources. So your best bet is just use fix my build and I wouldn't try to manually update anything whatsoever. Trust me, it's it's a pain in the butt. You guys don't want to do that. We got Frost, Fuse, H Atari. So these are all the list of all the emulators included here. Um, if you don't see any of the older emulators on here, that means we've already updated it to have uh, the best emulators possible that you do need. Uh, we do have Rycast or Recast, Stella, Scum. We have uh, Beetle. Uh, you've noticed we have Flycast, but not Flycast Dojo. Flycast Dojo is still being worked on. Um, as far as single board computers are uh, concerned, you guys know I've made a number of videos in regards to Marvel vs. Capcom 2 and what RK 1UP has released. So as you guys notice, we don't even have it on here ourselves. Final Burn Alpha 2012. BS NES. We have MAME 2000, 2003, 2010. SNES. X Rick. Uh, let's see. We got uh, Duke Nukem 32 is on here. That's just another port. Cody is on here. Uh, let's see. We got uh, Wolfenstein 3D is on here. And then, of course, you also have your built in scraper tool as well. So, uh, those are a lot of packages that you guys will be able to uh, fully enjoy. And then, of course, we have controller settings. Now, if you notice, the only one currently installed is the Xbox GamePad. Um, for those of you new to the community, I'm not sure. I know but back in the day that there was a configuration issue or a conflict. If you install the PS3 controller driver and use it with Xbox, the Xbox would stop working. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's been fixed. I haven't fully tested it. But uh, you do have the ability to... Uh, Download all your drivers. So if something's not working initially after you plug it in, you can go ahead and reinstall it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at manage experimental packages. And again, everything that I'm showing you guys right now is the biggest difference between uh, some of the other builds that are out there versus and also Supreme Ultra 1.0. I know a lot of people will, uh, you'll watch videos where people will say, hey, this is the best image, but they never show you this stuff. You never look at the options. And what's also funny is the same stuff that they're showing you is stuff that the Supreme team made anyway. That's either copied and pasted or used uh, on the image that they claim is the best. So in case you guys want to know, we also got Dolphin. Uh, Dolphin's not installed, but you can run that from... Uh, you, well, it doesn't run right through emul or through emulation station, but you can run it from the Raspberry Pi OS. DOSBox got another version of MAME here. 
Redream is also at it. You guys know that is my favorite uh, emulator for um, Dreamcast games and Thomas Waves. Unfortunately, uh, uh, hopefully the team decides to work on some type of light gun support because everything runs really great through Redream. Uh, shout out to that team there. I first showcased them here on the channel at the end of 2019 uh, when we first uh, had a debut here on the Pi 4. Uh, we also have uh, Beetle Saturn. I think there may have been some improvements uh, due to a shader with Sega Saturn. Um, I haven't seen any Orange Pie videos, but again, keep in mind, you know, regardless of what emulator you have or what board power performance it has, a lot of it is still up to the emulator as to whether it could process it correctly um, and show it. Uh, it all has to do with the emulator. So I know before Sega Saturn was missing some shaders for performance. I haven't tested it yet because I don't have this fully... Uh, install but i believe there were some improvements made to that emulator and so if so you would get a better emulation performance uh with some of the newer sega or the other uh, sega saturn games dos box pure dos box is installed uh gear system here h atari and then of course we got some of my favorites mame 2015 2016 mame mame uh or nest 2016 we have a uh, parallel in 64 emulator. That one is uh, supports Vulcan. And again, going back to the whole emulation support thing, a, a lot of emulators don't support some of the advancements like Vulcan and some of the other ones. So uh, that is one of the emulators that does uh, support uh, Vulcan. But you know what? I don't think Vulcan is installed on this, but if you ever want to compile it and run it on Supreme Ultra uh, 2.0, you can and it should handle it. Stella Scum. Uh, let's see, XR1. Open block. And then, of course, we have all the other RetroPie supplementary things here. Uh, let's see, we got, oh, Pegasus Moonlight. All right, so let's go ahead and back out. Let's see, here you can go to manage uh, all packages. Okay, so that pretty much gives us a different breakdown if you guys want to categorize uh, what's installed, what's not installed. So we're going to just back out, out of here. And let's take a look right now at some of the configuration tools. I'm not going to go through all of these, but just give you guys a quick look for those of you that love to tinker. You got USB source ROMs, uh, uh, USB source uh, ROM service, splash screen, scraper, Wi-Fi. So these look like they're all standard here as well. And again, this is based on RetroPie 4.8. I know I haven't done a video on RetroPie 4.8 as of yet, you know, just kind of comparing comparing the two between 4.6, 4.7, and 4.8. Uh, but this is running off of the latest RetroPie uh, release. So I do have a few systems installed. Uh, keep in mind, if you guys are looking to run uh, PC games, we do have Wine available as well. Um, this is another uh, system that a lot of people wanted in the community. And if you are trying to use Wine or if you are trying to use, I think there's one other system. I can't remember if it's Tamo or whatnot. But uh, there's only two things I can think of that will run Wine. I think I have them installed. So the one we're looking at right now is Slick Tech. Uh, that has it, and then uh, the Epic Noir theme also has, let's go back, also has uh, the Wine interface. So if you guys switch over to a theme that doesn't have this category broken down for you for Wine, you won't be able to access that system. So unless you guys are into writing code for Linux or modifying a particular theme, and then you say, hey, Supreme Ultra is supposed to have wine. Where is it? You just change your theme. Well, that's why, because the theme doesn't actually see it. But however, it is there for you. All right, we got Cody, Sega Master System. I mean, I'm not going to spend any time running these games. You guys know uh, what the system can emulate up to. It can emulate up to uh, Dreamcast. Remember, Sega... Saturn actually runs pretty well with 2D based games, but because there's a lack of GPU support, uh, a lot of the 3D games uh, run kind of poorly. 
So uh, that's one of the things the Raspberry Pi Foundation, hopefully they pay attention to in the future releases is the GPU support because there's a lot the Pi 4 can run, but uh, just based on the system requirements with the um, uh, the power of the board, but it lacks a lot with uh, GPU. So like even Nintendo Wii would run a lot better if it had genuine uh, driver support and better support for GPU. But unfortunately, in that case, you know, it doesn't. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people right now have a lot, huge interest with the Mali uh, GPU with like the Orange Pi and some of the other boards that are out there is because of the GPU integration. So if it doesn't have too much GPU, then uh, you're going to have a rough day uh, trying to get some of these games to run, even though the hardware optimizations or specs are there. But uh, the 3D rendering games is, is definitely key. You got to have that. Hey, what's going on, uh, Double D uh, Guitar? How you been, man? How's your Atari image working out? Your fight stick. All right. So this is one of my favorite systems here. Just kind of going through some things. Um, I'm not going to do a second screen setup for you guys today, showing you how this works with the visual uh, marquee tool script. I have plenty of videos for that. And so uh, this will be releasing uh, again, should be releasing tomorrow. Um, if the Supreme team doesn't post any leaks, I may, share a couple through either mega or google drive uh the base image for this is roughly 29 gigabytes and of course this is compatible with all the pi 4 models now uh, again there may be a power difference based upon your board i've never used the four gig or i've never used the two gigabyte or the one gigabyte model but it should boot it should work um but as far as the higher end systems are concerned and maybe then games like virtual cop I can't tell you whether or not how those will emulate because we never tried it. Nintendo 64, Mega Drive, Master System, Macintosh, Nintendo Game & Watch, and then, of course, we have Dreamcast. Um, I loaded this down with a few of my arcade games, so I will... Let's see here. Let's go back. I don't think I have any hard-to-run arcade games on here. I remember, I remember back in the day, one of the hardest ones to run was Area 51, and that we all know that runs well now. Let's see. Area 51. Where is it? Oh, there we go. We got the Area 51 Maximum Force combo. Now, if you guys want to use video loading screens, uh, you do have that. Uh, not every RetroPie image has that. In fact, not even the stock version has that because, again, that was a script that was made by the Supreme team. So if you guys see video loading scripts, that's more contributed work from the Supreme team. Oh, sweet. You know, I've never loaded up a Mr. Burns image. I should probably check it out. But um, is, is that a new image that he made? This is, is was that specifically made for that Atari fight stick, or is that a, just a generic one and you modified it for your fight stick? All right, I'll give you guys a little bit of gameplay. I got, I, I love me some Area 51. And I'm not using Ascendant or anything right now. I'm using my stock controller, but uh, everything will work with Ascendant. Oh, sweet. Uh, what base image is he using for the Pi 4? Is it stock or is he using like a Supreme or something like that? It's made recently not for the stick, just for some tweaks to get the ball running in dual sticks. All right, cool. That's nice. Um, yeah, I've never used any of his stuff. So get me posted. Let me know how it works out. 
I know a lot of people have uh, had some issues with the uh, that fight stick trying to get it to work with an image. So how much time did it take you to modify the image to work with the fight stick? Oh, come on. Give me that already. Oh, come on. Sweet. This stock with some good scripts. Okay. That's good to hear, man. That's what I like to hear. That's what it's all about. Simplicity. Yeah, I had to make that Pi 4 Atari image because, you know, I wanted to obviously keep something simple, but, you know, I wanted something with all the scripts, like the video marquee script and, you know, all the other customizations. So that's pretty much why I made that Pi 4 one. About half an hour of updates and a couple of ROM swaps, adding the Zenmo scripts. He has rotation stuff down great. So, yeah, that's a lot of time. Half an hour, updates, a couple of ROM swaps, adding Zenmo scripts. You know, I've had so much pro uh, many problems with those Zenmo uh, scripts. Um, you know, I know Micro Center went away from those. In fact, uh, they're going to – I know they've been kind of short right now in arcade stuff, but uh, they said that they're going to go to basic encoders. And I told him, too, that was a great option because in my Atari Fight or Arcade unit, you know, I use a, it, well, I use a Kronos Max uh, going to my Xbox. So if you want to use this for a console and adapt it to some other things, you can't do that with the Zemo board. You still are going to have dedicated controls. You can't put all your controls onto an arcade stick on one board. You got to have them single. So that way you can uh, use like a Kronos Max or Titan 2 or Chrono Zen. Uh, going into a uh, console unit because it doesn't read two arcade sticks going into uh, one adapter. Yeah, those little kits are pretty much great. I mean, they're they're really fun. Oh yeah, that's also new too. So as, you, as soon as you guys exit a game, or if a game doesn't start, you get that little Mario pop up uh, as well. Let's see here. You know what? Let me see if I loaded Jackie Chan on here. Let's see, Jack, Jackie Chan. Uh, this was one of the games that would run on the Pi 3B Plus. You know what? I don't even know why the RetroPie official team added Main 2016 uh, automatically to their their latest version for the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. I mean, it doesn't run. It it runs like crap. Um, it's worthless. So I don't I don't even know why. They um, added that on there. Yeah, it has its limits in that regard and the pain to set up. Yeah, I don't like I mean, they're cool. It has its purposes for the Zimmo controllers, but I just don't like them. I mean, I always like my stuff to be dedicated. You know, give me everything for one controller, uh, uh, a trackball, some, you know, give me a board for something else. I mean, you're going to start running into issues when you got multiple setups running on a board. And, um, I think some of you have even had problems using iPacks. iPacks really aren't too great for the Raspberry Pi uh, based upon some of the things I've seen in the community. I've never personally used them for Raspberry Pi, but um, let's see this gamer button. Let's see what we got here. I think I messed up on something there. It's been a while since I've ran this game, so let's try Jackie Chan Fist of Fire. Yeah, I would just stay away from the Zemos altogether. Just go get you a separate encoder and make sure you got you have a reliable encoder because uh, we've done a live stream here on the channel where we were talking about the uh, the encoder boards. You don't even know if they're compatible with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, I think it was uh, Santino who was on here, and then I was also on here with uh, Greg Zacker. 
from 99 Lives Arcade, and there were some issues with that. I think they went through like what 200 of them, and come to find out, uh, there there were some incompatibility issues. All right, so this is another CHD based arcade game. Runs really well here on the Pi 4. First showed this off when we debuted RetroPie running on the Pi 4 back in, what was that, August 2019? So as you can see, still runs. <laughs> I never saw this game in the arcade, but it looks pretty good. And of course, this does have light gun support as well. So if you guys are planning on using an AE light gun or a gun for IR, uh, it, this will work with this RetroArch. No additional scripts are needed. Um, and so again, this is an updated version or base to for the base or the images you guys have seen out there for Wolf and Nose's Retro Mania, my Venom image, Pistolero. I think uh, there's a few images out there that Damaso made off of uh, Supreme Ultra as well. So this is the higher version of Supreme Ultra. This is not Ultra 1.0 any longer. But I know one of the key benefits that a lot of you guys were looking for was... Um, that supreme, that supreme uh, sending menu, plug and play compatibility, access all your settings. Oh, I like that. This has on the ground combos, OTGs. I didn't know that. Hey, uh, Double D, did you get that new Atari Fight Stick? I think I know Micro Center went back up in price on them to about two hundred bucks. I know, I think they went down to 99 or like 179 or something like that. But um, they got like 12 of them in stock at my location. But I know they've gone back up in price. And then, of course, I know they've been out of stock for uh, the one that we have, the dual fight stick. They've been out of stock now on those for about a couple months. I've seen some pop up here and there, like it went in Texas and a few other places. But... Um, for the most part, you know, they really haven't been in stock. All right, let's see what else we got here. And, of course, you guys have Chromium. If you guys want to use Internet Explorer browser, you do have that on here as well. Um, let's take a look at Wine really quick. So, you know, what? I don't want to pull up Wine because I don't have my keyboard plugged in. So if you guys want to run Open Bore, some of the other games, uh, shoot, I'm trying to think of that other system. Some of the other PC games, this is where you would configure and have it run. I haven't spent too much time on it because, again, like for a lot of these games, I, I primarily have the R Raspberry Pi because it's a small form factor size of the credit card where I could use it. You know, for a lot of my retro games, you know, everything else I have it on computer. So if I'm sitting here. My choice of preference will be playing it on PC. But however, for uh, cost efficiency on power, single board computer, um, you know, for those of you guys who already have them, I know it's difficult right now to get a Pi. But uh, this is still the best bang for your buck right now as far as uh, retro gaming. Uh, you know, if you have a 3B Plus, Pi 4, one of the other variants, I know when I talked to one of the guys from the Raspberry Pi Foundation, they were working on the Pi 5. Uh, for the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, and, um, you know, they asked me my thoughts about it. What would I like to see? Things like that. And they do have uh, the retro gaming community in mind, you know, for a lot of the specs and things they're releasing because that is primarily one of the bulk uh, con contributors of where their sales go. All right, let's take a look here. So so this is Wine. This is where you guys will go play your PC games. You have your e-machine. Let's see, we got Amiga. I don't spend too much time in there. Uh, Macintosh. Now, if you guys didn't know this or not, YouTube has been cracking down on Cody tutorials. So 
And then also they've been slowly deleting repositories for, for uh, pirate and copyrighted reasons. So some of the things that you guys may have seen me add to the channel, if any videos are still up, because I think I had like a video or two deleted with uh, a Cody installation. Uh, you can only find those on a Raspberry Pi image if it has it. So, for example, uh, Venom still has it. Um, there were a few repositories I added. If you guys are trying to download this now to Supreme Ultra 2.0, you would try to have to copy and paste those repositories over if you know how to do that. But for the most part, they've deleted a lot of them. And so uh, if you are fortunate enough to already have a Pi image with Cody and certain streaming capabilities, uh, I would definitely hold on to it. So that's another uh, key thing in, or difference between some of the other Pi images out there is if it has those Cody repositories, that allows you to do additional streamings and access to movies and stuff, you will not be able to re-download them. And um, I remember maybe about a year, maybe a year and a half ago, I was like, man, why is my video like trending so much? Like, why is it you know getting a lot of views in such a short time period? Even though I made the tutorial like maybe three years ago, that's why, because people were trying to download it before they uh, went offline. They're still available. You can still use them, but you just can't re-download them anymore. All right, let's go back into visual tools. We have Hersty's themes, loading launching screens, media removal resolution. That's the video output script. So it's now been renamed just as a quick recap. Uh, we also have Skyscraper. That is a scraper tool utility. So you guys can scrape all your stuff. And then, of course, we have Switcheroo. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to allow this to reboot. Let's go ahead and reboot to... Let's go ahead and switch over to a track mode. And so the other biggest difference with this is before you had to configure or transfer over your emulation station controls to a track mode, you no longer have to do that. You no longer have to do that. So now emulation station is talking directly to a track mode and there aren't that many Pi images out there that have a track mode. And if you guys do happen to see it, uh, yeah, there's there's just not because uh, one of the guys that's on the Supreme team, he's a, he's a master at a track mode. I mean, that's what he loves. That's what he does. So that's why you see it here. So let's go ahead and switch on over to a track mode. And for those of you who are new that aren't familiar with what a track mode is, it's like the hyperspin version for uh, RetroPie. So it's going to take a few moments here. We're just going to let it reboot. I'll still be here. So it's just rebooting right now. So let's just give it a few minutes. Better refresh my TV. Let's see here. All right, so we are now in a track mode for Supreme Ultra. Dinner ready, got to jump. Thanks for the info, kill. Yeah, double D. Yeah, hit me up, man. Thanks for watching. See you around. All right, so everything you guys have seen with the track mode is still here. I'll oh, give me a second here. Let me turn some of this down. All right, we got extras. Chromium, Cody, Pixel, Steam. All your settings are still here. Everything that I've showed you guys on the emulation station side is still here uh, on Supreme Ultra 2.0. Track mode, visual tools, RetroPie tools, emulation, controller, audio tools, everything is still here. Uh, let's see what's in RetroPie. Bluetooth configuration editor. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Retro Arc, Show IP, Extras, Collections. 
So here's where it gets tricky. So a track mode talks to your file list a lot differently than standard emulation station. In fact, that's the only thing that really throws me off a little bit, kind of gets annoying because everything is perfect in emulation station as far as your library and stuff. You a, B, you know your ABCs, you know your numbers, you know where your systems are, but a track mode, it throws everything into certain categories. And so, um, yeah, it's it gets a little confusing when you're just trying to navigate. Because sometimes it could be under the letter of the system, or it could be under collections, handhelds, console, arcade games, and then it then uh, separates it by different types. So you got to understand your different types in order to uh, navigate around. So then, of course, you have your arcade, you have your Capcom play systems here. So once we go into replace uh, your Capcom systems, then of course you get a different category as games as well. This is why most of the time when you guys see me do a review on these things, I don't spend too much time on the attract mode side because when I'm trying to look for something, I just want it, you know, here and there. But if you guys are putting this into an arcade cabinet and you guys want to have that attract live uh, scenario, this is pretty well, or you know, it's pretty good. Or you can leave it on emulation station, uh, run the screensaver mode, and then have standard video clips, you know, clips play. That is, if you guys want that arcade ambiance to it. Uh, Capcom Play System 2. Let's see what's in here. And again, these are just only based off of the games that I've loaded. Uh, so I think there's roughly about 2,900 arcade games that I know of that uh, can run on the Pi 4. I've been through all of them. I've tested all of them. Been through them. At least all the ones that are compatible with the Pi. Got your Super Street Fighters. Uh, there shouldn't be any Daphne games in here because Daphne is under the uh, Daphne set. So it wouldn't be under arcade, even though technically it is an arcade game. Sega Naomi, that shouldn't be in here either. So you guys know that's a different set. Just all in all, you know, we try to put out work that's revolutionary, things you guys haven't seen before. And I just remind you guys, this is uh, a lot of the stuff that we show here on the channel that the Supreme Team does add is all unique stuff you guys add. You won't see it on any other channel, you know, you, well, unless after this release you will. But, you know, for the most part, you know, it's unique, it's, it's brand new, it's groundbreaking aside from what the RetroPie official team, you know, releases as far as optimizations and whatnot. But, uh, you know, we... we Take a look at some of the comments, you know, that we usually get. Try to keep everything simple and all the advancements. Now, um, I made a video a few weeks ago uh, stating that we are looking into seeing if we can port over the RK1 up front end. Uh, that is not on here. We still don't have the RK1 up front end to see exactly what it is they're doing. But we can port it over to Supreme Ultra uh, and add that to the switcheroo. So if you guys have seen the switcheroo on here using a track mode, Pegasus, uh, emulation station, and then of course the Raspberry desktop. Uh, that is still possible, but again, we still don't have it at that time. So, if you guys were looking to have that RK1 up front end on here that interacts with their network, uh, we don't have it, but it can be done. It, it, it can be done. And so, you know, besides that, and also waiting for my Orange Pies to come in. And again, for those of you new, the Orange Pi has nothing to do, the Orange Pi 5 has nothing to do with the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, it's just another form of single board computer, like the Rock Pi and Banana Pi. But um, I'm waiting to see when I'm going to get those so we can start some heavy duty developing and then get things like this ported over, see what breaks. Uh, we don't expect anything to run fluidly initially because. Uh, that's typically what happens when you start to create another fork uh, to a different type of board. You can already expect certain things may not work. And so that's one of the first things we're going to look at, such as uh, the marquee tool. Is that going to be possible? Um, it would be possible through another Raspberry Pi unit uh, for video output script. But uh, we're also going to take a look at uh, the video loading screens. That might be something that would need some fixing. So it's not a copy and paste scenario. You know, a lot of people, when they look at single board computers, they look at the hardware specs, you know, they'll say something will run, but everything has to run uh, together in harmony to have a successful build. And that's why you don't see any front ends, but you'll see videos out there showing individual emulators running. 
but uh, you won't see like in depth front ends really running on different single board computers because one thing might work and something else might not. So all those have to be optimized specifically for that board. But you know, again, the track mode looks really nice, and this is something. Um, I've never seen anybody really go in depth with the Atracmo side of it. There's a guy named Out of My Mind Arcade. He really customized all the video scripts and everything that he did uh, with uh, his version. So uh, we got something in the works, too, so you guys can uh, focus on that. Make sure you guys hit that notification bell. All right, Sega Classics. Tato, so you see what categories they put these on, uh, put these in. And everything looks nice. I mean, I love the video clips. I mean, they're in on Venom and some of the other ones. But again, the thing that throws me off is just the categorization of uh, all these emulators and all these different settings. It really just throws me off here. So let's take a look at handhelds really quickly. You have a lot of old school video clips that are there. A lot of work went into this. A lot of video work. Uh, it, I think it's like four gigabytes worth of data. Uh, of media for just the attract mode side. And it's, it's huge. In fact, I remember the first time Supreme Team added it to the 3B Plus and they had it on there. Uh, you won't see a lot of these video clips change because it's just so time consuming to resource. And if I made personalized video clips for everything, it would take weeks. It would take months to go in and find because you have this artwork here, as you see on the front, and then once you go into the actual system, then you have another video loading screen too. So that's two. So um, very time consuming. A lot of work went into this. And we definitely appreciate all the support uh, through our Patreons, YouTube subscribers, videos, uh, any type of support from all of you. We definitely give you guys a huge thanks for supporting uh, us because this is a hobby and it's fun. But, you know, again, we try to make things a lot easier for you guys. And if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense doing it. All right, so let's go ahead. I want to switch on over. Let's go back. Uh, shut down device. No, no, no. Let's go back to... Oh, crap. Did I try to initialize something? All right, this might kick me out. And once it does... I want to go back out and switch over to another front end. Oh, that's right. I do have a game on here. All right, let's exit out. Then, of course, we have your standard Mario now. He's going to say that. So if you guys are in Supreme RetroPie, if you're on RetroPie Official, my Facebook group, uh, you should start seeing links pop up tomorrow. I don't know if it'll be a 12 a.m. thing or whatever, but as far as I know, they'll come out tomorrow, whatever the case may be. All right, here we go. So let's go to settings. I don't want to shut down device. Let's go to front end selector. All right, so we could either uh, boot to desktop. I'm not going to do that because I don't have my mouse or keyboard plugged in. Uh, let's go ahead and boot on over to Pegasus. So it's going to reboot. And then, again, you guys are witnessing something that's never been done before on any RetroPie image. is a quad boot setup. Quad boot RetroPie build. Never been done before. You guys are witnessing it for the first time. You know, it's been a while since I've been on the Pegasus front end. Let's see here. Been a long time. Now, if you guys are like me, originally I had problems with Pegasus, and come to find out it was the theme. Hopefully this thing doesn't freeze here on the live stream. If so, I'll just be stuck. So I had problems initially when we first started working with Pegasus, and sometimes it would freeze if I went outside the menu. So 
hopefully you guys shouldn't have that issue, but if it ever happens to you in the future, uh, my understanding is you could change this particular theme and it should go away. So let's see what we got here. And so I'm going to use my top left and right bumpers in order to switch through uh, the system and voila. Okay, cool. It's working perfectly. So this gives you guys another front end to take a look at or a different theme. Well, I don't know if you want to. Well, it's a different front end. It's not a uh, theme because the theme will be in emulation station. So uh, this is Pegasus. For those of you guys who have never seen it, we've had it two years now. It's not really showcased too much. So uh, you're not going to see all the systems because I don't have everything loaded on here, but you are looking at artwork and uh, videos from some of the systems that are supported. So uh, as far as I know, this is the grandioso of them all. This supports almost 300 emulators, something like that, 200 and something systems. I don't remember what the count is. But you guys have plenty of options to enjoy your retro gaming. If you guys just want to use this in the background, leave it running. This is TurboGrafx-16. Have this on here as well. Wine Explorer, Zork. And of course, we got all the arcade games and everything on here as well. Yeah, let's try some 1941. All right, we're going to run this directly from Pegasus. Um, haven't done a lot of testing on Supreme Ultra 2.0. Don't have the time like I used to, but uh, I definitely stand by all their work. So if you guys have any questions, make sure you guys uh, obviously leave a comment here on this video, but primarily reach out through you know some of the channels that we do have. Now, again, for those of you who want to uh, erase the bezels, you can do that. You could go into the file system on the Raspberry Pi device and I think it would clear up probably, I want to say maybe a gig, 500 megabytes to a gig or so. There's a lot of files that are on here. So uh, primarily the bezel pack was made because most people when using the Raspberry Pi or Retro Pi was, uh, had this on a TV. And so I'm playing it on a TV right now. It looks cool. It's fun. But, you know, when the arcade craze started to kind of come back around, I would say towards uh, 2018, they really became obsolete. And if you're using like a 5.4 monitor, 4.3, they were kind of pointless. You want that additional screen space. And there is a way to turn it off, but they don't stay off permanently. So my best guess or my base an answer for you is if you are using this on a uh, dedicated, let me pull up something real quick. Uh, if you're using this on a dedicated arcade unit, just go ahead and delete the bezel project. You don't need to have it on there. This takes up additional space. Uh, the only borders that you will need to keep on there are the ones uh, for uh, the sending, sending gun. So, all right. Oh, this freaking sucks. You mean I got to press the button for this game? Shoot, I'm going to have to turn on some rapid fire. Where's my Chrono Zen? It sucks. Why in the world? Well, of course. I, mean, I can tell you guys how many times I've had calluses on my hands from playing all these arcade games. I think the first time I got a major callus on my fingers was when I was playing Ninja Turtles. I was so excited when that game came out. Man, that, that was the game to have when uh, it first released. In fact, the first time I played Ninja Turtles was uh, at the bowling alley. Couldn't believe what I was saying. I mean, it wasn't, you know, you guys didn't have, we didn't have IGN or anything back in the day, YouTube or Facebook. You know, you walked in, that was a brand new game.
Yeah, if you're on uh, one of our Patreons or my Patreon, you can get this now. But, I mean, it's officially releasing publicly uh, tomorrow. You know, there was a lot of back and forth, you know, a couple of years ago, whether or not anything should even be released with the uh, Supreme menu. Because originally, with that Supreme light gun script, sending light gun script, you had to be a supporter. It was on the online toolkit. But now uh, everybody will have access to it. So. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You know, I don't spend too much time uh, gaming on here or playing retro games. I probably should because I spend a lot of time playing and testing, but, you know, we're all here for enjoyment, but uh, I definitely should spend some more time streaming or uploading some gameplay. In fact, uh, the other night I was, I think I went for like three or four hours. I was playing Defense Grid and... Had to delete the video because my audio was all jacked up. So I got to fix whatever issue is having because randomly I'm using a new microphone for this setup. Sometimes it'll automatically delete or uh, shut off in the drivers. I don't know what the issue is uh, while I'm playing. So so the audio was all jacked up. I have no idea what uh, happened with that. But thank God the microphone was coming straight through clean today. Oh, shoot. So, All right. Well, that was one of the fun ones. Let's take a look and see what else we got. All right, so let's go back now. We're going to switch uh, the front end. Let's go back and do, let's see, it should be, ah, here we are in settings. We got Bluetooth. We got switcheroo. So that's what we're using to switch back and forth. All right, so let's jump back over to emulation station. And it's gonna reboot again, so it just takes a few minutes. Hey, have any of you guys seen that new system that Logitech is selling? I think I posted a picture of it um, in my Facebook group. It's that unit they're selling for like 300 bucks. Looks very similar to the Steam Deck. Was wondering if any of you guys check that stuff out. And apparently it came out before the Steam Deck, but they said it didn't come out too much later. So it's not made to compete, but however, they are kind of competing in the same space even though it's very similar in what, you know, it has to offer. But, you know, for that price, I think they really need to come down a little bit. All right, so here we are back on Emulation Station. Uh, I'm going to change the theme because I want to show you guys something. So you guys see wine is right there, right? So let's go ahead and change the uh, theme. We're going to change it over to something basic. Let's move it over to Supreme Floyd. Wait for it to load. All right. Oh, okay. Wine is on this one too. So that's another theme that has it built in. So let's change it to something else. Let's try Supreme Retro. I think this is a different theme. Okay. Ah, there we go. So you see wine is not there. Um, we should be able to click on it. There it is. So that's wine. So again, you guys will have wine there. I mean, I know everybody likes to customize their own themes and add it, but for some of these systems, if you want them to show up, you have to use one or modify it to add uh, the available systems. You know, that's one of the things that uh, is unfortunate in this system. You have to modify a particular theme to show all the systems that are available because if you pick the wrong one or if it's not custom, then you can have stuff and have black spots like that. So, again, wine is there, but it's not going to show 
because the theme doesn't support it. But if we switch back over to, let's see if Supreme Space has it. And this thing was made by the Supreme team too. So, okay, so wine is there. All right, and let's switch back over. I think there's Epic Noir. I think that one has it as well. All right, so let's change it to that. Cade, Chromium, Dreamcast, Cody, Mega System, N64, Auric, Options. And I've modified a very similar theme, theme to this using Venom. So uh, we do have that as well. Valve Steam. What is this? Uh, this must be Sufami. So as you can see, this is another thing that doesn't support all the systems that are on here. Z Machine. Okay, so this one, yeah, this one does have uh, the wine interface on here too. So let's go ahead and switch back over to something else. All right, we got some Neo Geo gameplay here. One of my favorites is the Ninja game. Let's see, we have uh, yeah, Ninja Combat. This was, you know, one of my uh, favorite Neo Geo games. You know what? You know, uh, one of the things that I think that some of the arcade companies should have done, you know, if they wanted to do something new or revolutionary, uh, if you guys remember when the Neo Geo games came out, they had that card system where you could play it on console and then take your save progress to the arcade uh that's something that they should have added to like arcade one up maybe at games and some of the other ones there uh is figuring out like how could they adapt that with something like even right now um i'm getting ready to go over to universal studios uh the super mario world and so we were asking ourselves like what did they want because originally i thought the prices of those bracelets were like 69 bucks but it's like 40 40 or whatever the case might be but you could use that in the park but it's also an amiibo system so you can use that uh get coins at universal studio super mario land or super mario world and then or the super nintendo world i'm sorry take the coins put them on the watch and then use that on your console so that would have been something cool to see uh, them do for these arcade home arcade units is add something where you could use it with either Xbox or your save progress or if they have some type of collection system on uh, their website you know that would have been something cool you know but you know it is what it is Oh, there we go. Yeah, this was cool. Because, you know, most of the time when you play these games, Ninja Stars were like a power-up. You didn't start off with Ninja Stars automatically. Yeah, I love this. This was so cool, oh, man. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't know you could hold in that button and do some moves either. Pretty nice he added there in there. You know that ninja looks like Spiral. From Marvel vs. Capcom 2. So as soon as I get my orange pie, we will get up and running, seeing what we can port over, seeing what it can run in the in the aspect of a front end. 
I'm just really excited about it. I just can't believe. I know most of the people who got it, you know, they got it on. Um, they did a pre-order because the official launch date, from my understanding, uh, isn't until February 10th. However, I got my Amazon update that they did ship it out. So however long it takes it to come through customs. Then, of course, I did get my cases from AliExpress. So I wonder if it would have been easier for me to, or maybe it would have made more sense if I had just got them through AliExpress. Maybe I would have already had it by now. We would have already started working on some stuff. But what's going on, Rockfish? Yeah, just doing a showcase today of uh, Supreme Ultra 2.0. And uh, let me jump out of this game. Yeah, just doing a showcase of it here. And then, of course, uh, just prepping, man. Just talking about what we can do. Talk to some other devs in the community about what we can do. I got to ship out these boards. You know, get the ball rolling. We don't sit on our hands over here waiting for somebody else to do something. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, I mean, it's all about optimization and all these features, man. I mean, take a look at all this stuff. You're not going to find this on any other image. And if you do, they got it from the Supreme team. You know, but you, you won't see a track mode and you won't see uh, maybe the marquee. I know that there's a set. I think I did a video for that for how to install it or showcase it. But a lot of these things you can add yourself. But, you know, it is what it is. Oh, my beautiful wife is checking me out. She says I'm the hottest thing she's ever seen in her life. And it's true. Isn't that right, honey? Of course. We have until Stardust tonight for dinner? Yep. Sweet. All right, guys. I will hit you up later. I'm going to go get me some Din Din. But uh, make sure you guys hit like and subscribe. Share the video. Uh, we love... Is this image going to be on backups only? No, it will be in our Facebook groups. I'm not sure if it's going to be on our IK punks. It might be. I don't know. Um, I've never personally uploaded anything to backups. I'm not familiar with their process, but if somebody uploads it over there, it is what it is. But, you know, we appreciate all the support. It's free for everybody. You don't have to pay for it. And I better not catch anybody out there trying to take credit or sell things that they know they didn't make. Like that Supreme Light Gun toolkit. Like, oh, I made this. You'll see it on somebody's video. But no, this will be in our Facebook groups. Uh, Supreme Team, RetroPie, uh, Arcade Paradise, uh, RetroPie Official, my hobby group, um, whatever else is out there, you know, for the most part, you know. And so um, make sure you have a Google Drive account. Uh, those usually get inundated in full you know, because of their network systems and their limitations. But the primary way of getting this will be through Mega Drive. And so the base image or base for the base will be 29 gigabytes, you know, for this. Let's see. Have I forgotten anything? No, no audio no audio issues there. But, yeah, you guys are going to love this Tamo uh, build. Theme and music overlay plus much more of the script. Changes between themes and their background music, plus many scripts for themes, downloading visual and audio tools, and much, much more. So uh, there's a lot this script can do. I haven't focused a lot on that, but just wanted to give you guys a brief teaser as far as some of the newer things you guys uh, will see that hasn't been shown in there. Uh, will there be an easiest way to install V2 over the Venom Im in image? No, this will be a brand new theme. Now, if you guys want to take the theme, some of the things I added, you know, then transfer it over, you can do that. But no, there is no upgrade. You will have to start fresh. Now, you can copy over your configs here. Let me just go ahead and post it here because Ira has a question. Hope I'm saying your name right, sir. Will there be an easiest way to install V2 over the Venom image by any chance? No. No. Uh, I personally never re recommend upgrading. There's there's a lot of things that have been upgraded that I don't even fully show you guys. So, for example, um, if you guys are familiar, sometimes you'll see a review 
somebody post a video and say, hey, well, this all retro pie images are the same. That is entirely false. Uh, not every image or stock image can even run Sega Saturn. The Supreme Teams adds additional scripts and performance optimizations for a lot of emulators so they can run. So I know there's been some changes here. So there have been advancements made to Sega Saturn emulation. Um, I can't remember exactly what they are, but they have been made versus what's been on Ultra 1.0 versus what somebody else's Pi image you know, may have. Um, I know uh, there were some complaints even about uh, like the hairy bare bones image because that's the bare bones image right off of Retro Pi official. You won't see Sega Dreamcast, not see Dreamcast, Dreamcast, but Sega Saturn on that. So, but you'll see that on these ready made images because a lot of people wanted to run uh, Sega Saturn and then have the Supreme Marquee tool. So, there have been additional optimizations on this particular type of base that you won't find anywhere else or you won't find on any other image. So, uh, not everybody's base and not everybody's image is, is equal in terms of performance, especially with Nintendo 64, Sega Saturn, and then a, a, a few other emulators as well. So no, yeah. So yeah, to answer your question, no, you got to do a whole new install to get everything going. So if you guys want to see what service I use, I know on my community tab I use uh, Mega. Let me see if I can pull up my Mega thing really quickly. I'll give you guys a link. Uh, this isn't the link to Supreme Ultra 2.0, but this is just a standard. You know what? Hold on. Let me see if I can just go ahead and release it. One second. Give me one second. Let's see what the status is for the time frame of this release. Uh, Trying to pull up a link here, guys. So give me one quick second here. Give me where's the link at? Trying to find a link that I could share with you guys right now. Uh, so, what is it? Sam Gnosis. Hope I'm saying your right, your name right. Um, are you new to RetroPie, or you just haven't gotten around to downloading it? All right, let me see if I can find this link for you guys. Where is the share link? Oh my gosh. If you guys have any questions i know there's always questions in the facebook groups and we kind of go over them consistently but we could definitely uh get those questions asked answered for you today um do you know if you guys are still having issues with the 8-bit dough controller ver uh, via bluetooth i know there was issues about that I had a RetroPie on a Linux PC once, but I'm no pro at all. Hey, well, that's cool, man. Well, welcome to the family. That's what we're here for. We're here to help everybody else and make sense of, uh, you know, what it is we're doing. So thank you for joining. Now, keep in mind, the Raspberry Pi is definitely in no shape, way, or form a replacement to PC gaming, but it's simplified. You know, in fact, the reason... Uh, 
back in, I want to think it was 2017, 2018, I was setting up my game room and I didn't want to buy a bunch of those Dell computers because computers with their power supply, they, they, they're, 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 they're hogs. You know, they pull down too much power, too much resources. And I wanted something really sensible where I could just hook up to a monitor, install some games and also use its web browser. Cause I have all these freaking monitors. I didn't need a computer for each one of them. And so uh, when I was at arcade expo 4.0, that would have been around March, 2018, I came across this little guy and some guy was trying to sell me the unit for about $300. And I was like, man, why don't you let me borrow this so I can do a video? Like this thing is awesome. And so that's how I found out about the Raspberry Pi and Retro Pi. Somebody was trying to hawk it at me at Arcade Expo 4.0, which was the Museum of Pinball at the time for about $300. So I did my research, went online. Oh, you had a room full of deals? Jesus Christ. Man. So, yes, this is the Supreme Teams. Uh, you guys saw the last image. I did the final for real. That was the last image for the Pi 3B, 3B Plus, and also 2. Uh, I can't speak for any other teams out there, but this is the last retro Pi image for the Pi 4 from uh, me and also from the Supreme team. So if I do some other reviews, maybe it'll be on some older stuff. I don't know if anybody else is releasing anything, but we're done. This is it. This is the last Supreme image ever made for the Pi 4. You guys won't see anything else. Maybe you'll see images based on it. Maybe modifications based on it, but this is the last one. All right, let me see if I can find this link here because I can't find it. Where is this mega link? Okay, so the compressed image for Supreme Ultra 2.0 is 19.13 gigabytes. So when you extract it, it'll be 29 gigs. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go to my community tab and find this link. Also, I'm going to paste uh, here in the chat. If you guys are looking for a link to download the Orange Pi 5, I'm sorry, I'm going to download. Buy the Orange Pi 5 from Amazon. There's a link here. It is an affiliate link if you guys want to buy one of those. Uh, for those of you buying the Orange Pi 5 and you're basing it off of the hope that RetroPie will run, there are no promises or guarantees right now. Uh, that is something we're going to tinker with. So if you're buying it, you're buying it just like me, you're buying it at your own risk with the possibility that it could just be a uh, paperweight. So keep that in mind too. I mean, obviously I know like Lee PSP and several others, they made some videos with like Batacera and stuff like that, but just don't want you guys to go out and buy something thinking that, Hey, like this will work on the orange Pi five automatically. No, it doesn't work that way. A lot of things you guys have seen here, we've made it work. So let's see. All right. Let me see if I can find this freaking code automatically accept. Let's see, Supreme Ultra, Venom. And if you guys have questions about that uh, Supreme Light Gun script or anything concerning RetroPie or Supreme Ultra, please check out my playlist. You won't find another source that has as much information because I've covered everything that we needed to update and also keep in mind this is not something you'll find anywhere else uh again we're not affiliated with retro pie official this is all custom work 
tinkered that we've made for the community. So whatever they've released, it's been built upon that, expounded upon, and in some cases, even improved. Hey, how hot did your room get with a room full of Dells? Like, what was your electric bill like? Like, what was it normally? And then what was your uh, electric bill like when you had all those Dell computers? See, I'm still looking for some stuff here. Let me just exit out of this. I'm going to pull up the screensaver there. Back up. Mega Cloud features. No, that's not what I need. Great question. So between the two, I would go, uh, someone's asking me, would I go with the Gun 4 IR versus Send It? Um, it was super hot, but I rented a room electric. I rented a room electric was included with the rent. Okay. Landlord must have hated me. Yeah, probably so. So, hmm, great question. Um, because of all the things you could do with Gun 4, I would go with a Gun 4. Um, there have been times where I needed to quickly test something. Like right now, I'm sitting probably about a foot and a half away from uh, my monitor. And then, of course, if you guys saw my light gun pedal review where I had the Elgato pedal and I was playing tight like, time crisis and stuff like that, uh, the sending was very helpful because the sending doesn't matter how close I am to the TV or how far back I am. Based upon what I needed it for, uh, I, would, I would go with the sending. Mode. So the sending is a pain in the butt to set up. Uh, a lot of the community support things that you guys see right now were made by uh, the community as far as like Batisera automatic integration, what you guys have seen here now on the channel. And so, you know, that was just very time consuming. Getting RetroPie to freaking boot on the Pi 4, finding out what games could run. And then I had to turn around and figure out how it was going to be integrated with this version of RetroArch and nobody knew it would work. So it's, there's a lot of setup you have to do with the sending gun. So it does have its benefits. If I'm sitting here right now, a foot and a half away, maybe two feet away from my monitor, it's fine. It's great for like testing purposes. Uh, but I love the gun for IR. I love the uh, Samco guns. I love the recoil. I love you can mod this gun for it to do whatever it is you want to do. You know, so and then, of course, you can plug it in. It works with like Xbox and, you know, a few other consoles and whatnot. It's not made for that, but it does have that integration. Haven't had a chance to text it, uh, test it out with the Xbox Series S or X. But, um, yeah, both of them have its purposes, but I would go with the gun for Element landlord, yeah. Someone's asking me here, Molar Mechanic, is your choice the same for light gun PC versus Pi, or does Sendin win for PC? Sendin is much better and ideal for PC. It is not made for RetroPie. Um, the advancements that I've just shown here, in fact, I'll go ahead and pull up that menu. Where is controller tools? Uh, what I'm about to show you has never been shown before, or well, it's been shown before, but it's never been done. On Pi or Batasira. I know Bud is Batasira's plug and play, but you don't have a fully integrated menu for that. So, what you're looking at right now, you guys are going to get. This is brand new. This is what makes RetroPie or gaming with the send in a lot easier. Uh, there's over 3,600 lines of code for this that was made by the Supreme Team, community work, even though it is intellectual property rights involved and stuff like that. But this helps simplify. In fact, you have the auto on start script here. So this makes it more user friendly for the send in. All right. So if you're buying a send in gun right now, I would highly dedicate or advise you to have more or less PC in mind, you know, when buying it.
Yeah, so light gun gaming for PC versus Pi. And then, of course, with Pi, I mean, with PC, you can run a techno parrot, you know, different front ends, uh, different games. You know, there's more robust games that you can run on a PC. So, yeah, I mean, primarily, you know, uh, you're going to have more games you can run with the PC anyway. And there's plenty of uh, drives out there that you can buy that already have it. Obviously, it's not advisable because we got copyrights and trademarks and things like that involved. <laughs> But it is more ideal for that. All right, so Mrs. Hot Stuff is behind me. She's giving me that look, and so is uh, the puppy. Come here, give me a hug. So, if you guys don't have any further questions, we're going to sign out right now. Thank you guys all for joining. I know you guys have better things to do on a nice Saturday afternoon, but uh, we definitely appreciate uh, your time taken out coming here. So. Thank you guys again. So um, if you guys need me to do more reviews, comment below. If you guys have any questions, I'll probably, you know, I was always planning on doing some type of RetroPie live stream tutorial thing, community concerns, but we'll see. You know, people always ask these questions much later. So with that being said, I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Bye-bye.